Yeah. My grandma used to tell me opinions are like butts. You know, everybody's got one, but you don't want to see it. So. <laughs> Hey, Plus Size Nerds, this is Nancy Basile with Plus Size Nerd, and today I have such a great treat for you. I am interviewing Kimmy from Nerd Plus Magazine. First, please tell me, what was the inspiration for you to start a magazine? Because that is a big undertaking. Um, I started because I love all things nerdy. I love cosplay. I love gaming and I never really saw a lot of representation for the plus size community. Um, I would see magazines like Barnes and Noble and flip through all these amazing cosplayers, but no one was ever my size. So I just was like, well, if no one else is going to make it, why don't I? Um, so I just, started it and I did a bunch of research and I wanted to do print first but because of the cost and everything it would have been thousands and thousands of dollars um I looked into doing online magazine and I started in 2014 um wow. with just my friends and it just kind of started from there I wanted to have more of a representation of not only plus size cosplayers and nerds and geeks, but also more inclusive, um, mm. more races, more genders, more identities. I wanted it to be more open to anyone where they can look at the magazine and see themselves. I love that. You were kind of ahead of the curve really on that in 2014. Yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't find anything and it, it made me sad and it made me, you know, like I had just started getting into cosplay and I was looking for someone to be like my inspiration and I couldn't find anything. And I'm like, you know, looking at all these beautiful cosplayers and their magnificent work, but I'm like, I can't do that because I'm not skinny. <laughs> right. It makes such a difference when you can see yourself in someone that inspires you or that can be a role model. Yeah, it does. So who have you cosplayed as? Oh, God, I've done so much cosplay. Um, <laughs> I've done a bit of Love Live. I've cosplayed Hanayo. Um, I've done... Recently, I've done a lot of Critical Role. I love Yasha from Critical Role. Um, I started getting into the Adventure Zone, and I've done Kravitz. Um, I also do Azra from the Arcana in Portia. I just kind of do a mix of everything. I love anime and games, and I just, like, I want to cosplay everything. I think I have a list, like I have an entire folder that has about 400 to 500 images of cosplays I want to do. Whoa. It's a <laughs> yeah, Gold, like, right? Wow. <laughs> yes, I'm just like, or like a friend will be like, hey, I think you would be a really cool uh, this. And I'm like, bet, let's go. I want to cosplay it. <laughs> oh, so do you um, coordinate cosplays with friends? Oh yeah, I do a lot of like um, group cosplays with friends and couple cosplays with friends. And I'm just like, if a friend's like, hey, I wanna do this cosplay, but I don't have anyone to do it with. I'm like, okay, let's do it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm game, like let's do it. <laughs> wow. Well, what kind of things do you cover? What kind of things do your writers cover? Um, we cover a lot of conventions. Um, we cover interviews with voice actors or authors, um, like game, like game uh, creators. We um, do a lot of DIYs. Um, I like to interview a lot of like cosplayers for our cover. Um, a lot of game reviews. Um, honestly, anything that we can think of. Um, thankfully our writers are so like amazing with what they can come up with. Um, and because of everything going on, you know, we've had to be even more creative and figure out more ways to 
fill the magazine because we can't do convention coverage and we can't do, you know, a lot of face-to-face interviews. So it's been a little bit harder, but thankfully the team that I have is absolutely brilliant and they've been able to, you know, we've been able to bounce ideas off of each other and still be able to create. Wow. Yeah, that's true. So normally when conventions are actually happening, you have Mm -hmm. people who live at various places and can go to those conventions then and report back. Oh, that's great. So what are some of the creative things that you've come up with to fill, fill that void since we can't go to real life conventions? (laughs) Um, We have self shooting um, ideas, how to self shoot at your home. Um, A lot lot of people can't shoot right now or, you know, they're immune compromised like I am. And I would love to shoot some of the, you know, the cosplays that I have, but I can't, you know, so we do that. Um, We're working on a math tutorial, like a cute, nerdy math tutorial. Um, One of my friends is working on a dragon egg tutorial for it. Um, We have a lot of DIYs also, like how to take care of yourself right now, you know, Mm -hmm. mentally, physically, emotionally, like how to really take care of yourself. Because not only is, you know, it's fun to be nerdy and, you know, express yourself, but right now your mental and emotional health are extremely important. So we want to reach out to others and be like, it's okay. Like, it's going to be okay. We're going to get through this and we're here for you. Yeah. Um, I read an article about mental resilience because the human brain, it's so difficult to endure something when you don't know where the end is. Like exactly. It's, right. It's so much easier, you know, to keep going when you can see that last step or the light at the end of the tunnel. So that's really important. Yeah. For a lot of people. Um, oh yeah. You have a beautiful Tiana on the cover right now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She's gorgeous. She, she's amazing. Um, she's, <laughs> She was so sweet to interview and I've been following her for quite some time and it was an honor to actually interview her and talk to her. And who is it? Uh, Midnight Persona. She's Ooh. an amazing, amazing cosplayer that's been doing cosplay for more than 10 years. Um, she, Her craftsmanship is beautiful. She's an amazing soul. She's an advocate and I was so honored that she agreed to interview with us. Oh, that's great. So where do you turn when you're looking uh, to build something or sew something? Um, I usually turn to YouTube. Um, mm. YouTube has been a safe haven for me for about 10 years now. Um, I started off doing makeup tutorials and stuff like that um, in 2008. <laughs> so, wow, um, yeah, you are a founder. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I, I've stepped back from doing that for a while just because of all the drama that's been going on there. And I'm just like, I'm staying away. (laughs) I'm very clueless. I don't know about, is it like makeup drama specifically? Yeah. Makeup drama, um, makeup guru drama. It's just like, if you're not like getting this certain amount of followers, you're, you're not, you know, you're not cared about and just, it makes the entire community look like backstabbing snobs, basically. <laughs> and I, I don't, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really toxic. And I love makeup with a passion. And um, I mean, I'm a makeup artist, so I love, you know, working on the side and doing that. But yeah. as for the community on YouTube, I just, I can't anymore. So I had to take a step back from that. Um, But I love like finding like ideas and stuff on YouTube because I still go back to YouTube. I still look at, I still look at makeup tutorials. I still look at, you know, how to do this and that. And I feel like with YouTube, I can pretty much find anything that I need to um, learn how to make. Yeah. Um, what's your like go-to brand or are you just like, you play all the time? Oh, I just, Oh, hi. I don't really have a go. Yeah. This is Jinx. <laughs> he's, he, yeah, he's my, he's my sweet son. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I just, I just, whatever I can find that I like, I will go towards. Like, I don't have a set brand that I go towards. I'm just like, if it, if I like it and it looks cool, then I will definitely like go towards it. <laughs> cool, very cool. You mentioned um, that you're close to Atlanta, so I have to ask, as a huge Marvel fan, <laughs> did you get to see anything being filmed in Atlanta, or did you cover any of that for the Avengers or anything? I wanted to so bad. Um, I like my friend; she saw some filming and stuff, but I personally did not get to. I personally don't have a car, so I wasn't able to do anything. Um, but my friend, they saw a lot, um, and I was so jealous. And I'm just like, I hate yeah. you, but I love you so much. <laughs> Let me live vicariously through you. <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> friend lived close to where they filmed a bunch of Stranger Things stuff. And she was, like, showing me, like, every, like, she's like, oh, yeah, they filmed this over here, and they filmed that over there. And I'm just sitting there, like, vibrating in the backseat, like, why are you so calm about this? Like, yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, they were filming the other day when I drove by, and I'm like, and you, you didn't <laughs> come get me the second you saw this? <laughs> I am offended. I thought we were friends. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, that is such a great show. I'm a huge fan of that too. Yeah. So when you're when you're setting your content calendar then for the magazine, just talking to you, it must be really hard to narrow down what you're gonna cover because you, yeah. you know, everyone has so many interests. Oh yeah. Like we try to set up four articles per person so that mm -hmm. way we don't have so much and um, we try not to do any repeat articles. So if someone's like, Hey, I want to do this. And I'm like, okay, well, we've covered this in past articles. Let's think of something different, you know, trying to keep all of these things that we've already covered and come up with new stuff is a lot. So I have to keep spreadsheets and notes and everything of past articles, past issues and everything like that. So that we don't make repeats and, you know, we don't interview the same people again because my brain is terrible. I forget so much. If I don't write it down, I will not remember. <laughs> so well, it's great, though, write. because people can buy past issues, right? Archive issues? Yes. yes. So then yeah, um, you have this catalog of content. We have issues from 2017, 18, and 19. Um, we went through a name change, um, so to be a little bit more inclusive, um, we started off as like curvy cosplay, then we went to cosplay plus, and then now we're nerd plus because we wanted to be more inclusive instead of just being a cosplay magazine. So we went through a name change, and with that, we had to take out the past issues. So I want to be able to take the articles from our past issues and bring them back in a more updated format. So I'm currently working on that. So that's going to take a bit of time. But the yeah. ones that we've had while our Nerd Plus, um, they're still up. Um, do you have advice for people who want to start cosplaying, but maybe, you know, they're a little shy or they're afraid like they haven't built it from scratch, so they're not sure if they'll be accepted. Like, do you have anything to say to a beginning cosplayer? Yeah, just start. I started doing closet cosplays with stuff that I had in my house. Um, and I also started thrifting a lot of my stuff. Um, and as long as you're making yourself happy and doing what you love, forget everyone else. Like. If anyone has anything bad to say, you know, forget them because their opinion doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, if you're making yourself happy, that's all that matters. You don't have to learn how to sell your cosplays. You don't have to do, you know, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on props and all this other stuff. You know, you can use what you have in your home. You can, you know, you can buy cosplays off the Internet. Like, you don't have to make everything, you know, thread count and everything like it doesn't matter as long as you're doing what you love and you know having fun that's all that matters you know all the right. people that sit there and say you know oh you have to be x y and z to be a cosplayer 
are nothing but elitist and they're not cosplayers at all. Right. I've um, I've heard other cosplayers say that generally when they get negative feedback, it's from someone who doesn't cosplay. Yeah. Right. It's either someone who doesn't cosplay or someone who considers themselves um, a professional cosplayer who only cosplays one character. Oh, so professional cosplayers generally just do one character? A lot of them do. They'll do one mm -hmm. specific character, and if someone else cosplays their character, they get very territorial. Um, mm -hmm. And I've noticed that a lot in the community, and it's very discouraging if you love a character and you want to cosplay them. But yeah. at the end of the day, like their opinion doesn't matter. Um, and their opinion is just their opinion. And, you know, yeah. my grandma used to tell me opinions are like, but, you know, everybody's got one, but you don't want to see it. So, I try to remember that. I try to remember that when I get negative feedback, like, oh, you can't call me this because you're, you know, you're fat or you're, you know, you're, you present female because I am non-binary. So they say you present female, so you can't cosplay this character. And I'm like, okay, cool. Thanks. You know, I just remember what my grandma told me. And I'm just like, you know, that's your opinion. At the end of the day, I'm making myself happy and I love the way I look. So that's cool. You know, Good for you. Was it hard? <laughs> was it hard for you to get to a place where you know you could just kind of let that stuff bounce off of you? Oh yeah, um, mm -hmm. I I've been bullied my entire life, um, and it got really bad in high school to the point I had to drop out. Um, oh, no. So it took until I was probably 22, 23 for me to just be like. I'm done. Like, I'm really done. Um, and it took a lot of work on myself and a lot of just figuring out who I was as a person and who I was, you know, spiritually and mentally to just not care anymore. And um, I take what I went through in, you know, middle school and high school and I know that I went through that to become a stronger, better person. Um, and I've learned a lot growing up and becoming who I am today because, you know, I have friends that are like, someone said this to me and hurt my feelings. And, you know, I'm always there for them. I'm like, you know, message me if you need me. You know, I completely understand where you're going and completely understand where you're coming from. Like their opinion doesn't matter. So it's taken a lot. In some days, you know, it does get to me um, because I'll do get a comment on a day where I'm not feeling that great and it does get to me and it does hurt. But you do have to think of it as like they're mad about something else or they're having a bad day or maybe they're just a terrible person, you know, and they just want to bring you down. And at the end of the day, you know, you're doing what you love and you're not hurting anybody. So just be yourself, be happy, be happy for yourself and be happy for them because if they can't be happy for themselves, then be happy enough for them. Wow, you are, <laughs> you're killing it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, you said that you're big on social media. Do you, mm -hmm. um, do you have like your own little practices that you follow when you're on social media? Because social media can be kind of a, you know, a mental health killer. Yeah, um, I try to stop going through social media like a couple hours before I go to bed um, mm -hmm. and just kind of relax. I'll play Animal Crossing for like a couple hours and just like pick weeds out of my yard and like hang out with my villagers and just kind of disconnect. It's very important to disconnect from social media because it is very mentally draining. And it takes a lot out of you. Um, I'll turn off my computer. I'll walk away from it. I'll turn off my phone um, and just play Animal Crossing, cuddle with my son, um, and just, you know, put on a podcast, you know, listen to whatever or music and just, just kind of zone out. 
Mm -hmm. um, and it really does help because you are more energized the next day. And I feel like I'm more mentally sound the next day. And especially if I'm having a bad mental health day, um, I just try to limit my social media usage to just minimum um, and try not to just do the endless scrolling and the endless updating. You know, I'll just be like, OK, I'm going to spend five minutes on here just to check messages and stuff like that. And then I'm out. So. Yeah, good for you. Um, I. I liken it to being at a party, like a really crowded party and trying to have conversations with everyone all at the same time, you know, like you yeah. can only, you can only keep that up for so long. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. If there was one thing you wanted people to take away about Nerd Plus Magazine, what would it be? anyone can cosplay um it doesn't matter your gender your race your sexuality um disability nothing you can cosplay you can be the superhero of your dreams you can be your favorite anime character you can be whoever you want um cosplay um you can start small with just makeup and um thrifted items or you know you can buy something off the internet or you can make it yourself it doesn't matter you know cosplaying should be for you it should be for fun you should enjoy it and it's honestly been the best experience of my life because i've met the most important people in my life due to cosplay and if you're interested in it definitely go in do it you know attend a convention once they start up and it's like okay to do um, or even the online conventions that a lot of people have been doing, um, which I highly recommend just, or you can just dress up just for fun. Like you don't have to dress up for conventions. You can dress up at home and take cute pictures and just be yourself because you're doing it for fun. You're not doing it to gain followers or to get clout or anything like that. You're doing it for you. And if it makes you happy and you love this character, do it. And don't let anyone take that joy away from you. That is great advice, Kimmy. Thank you so much for being with me today. Well, thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun and I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so where should people go to find Nerd Plus Magazine online? Um, we're on Facebook, um, we're also on Instagram, and our magazine is on Store Envy. You can definitely find us on there. Great, and if you're looking for links, I've got them included in the description below.